Hello everybody, my name is Cyclone, and I am making a video guide on Creator as part of the Arid Talent Show event going on currently. Uh, Creator is, in my opinion, one of the most overlooked classes in the game. Um, Creator is a burst, synergy, sustained holder with damage absorption and suction, and she pretty much has everything. Um, many of her moves are, I guess you'd call them install type, where you can just place them on the ground, forget about them, and move on to the next move, which allows her to get out an incredible amount of skills in a short amount of time. Um, however, because she doesn't actually work off of cooldowns, she works off of a gauge system, this actually allows her to have good sustain as well. Um, you can see the moves I have on my hotbar have little gauges on them. If I cast moves, they go down and I don't actually have to wait for those gauges to fill up entirely before I can cast them again. Um. So, first I'll talk about the skill build. Uh, not much to talk about here. Uh, Creator does not have a hard time deciding on what skill she wants. You look at my skill tree here, the only two skills I don't have maxed out are the two spells as part of the fire, firewall and meteor drop. Um, and I'll talk about why I don't skill that over anything else in a moment. Um, but yeah, everything else can be mastered without a problem. Or, yeah. Uh, make sure to get quick rebound and magical critical as needed. And no nothing else up here matters. As part of the TPs, um, since you don't get fire, you don't skill those. Um, I wouldn't recommend Flame Hurricane either, which means you just dump them into everything else. Um, drop the one point of Ice Shield, which that's probably my least damaging move out of everything else there. Uh, now going on to the individual moves themselves, how they can be used. First I'll talk about her buff. Uh, Creator is a Synergy class, um, and synergies exist through their buffs. Uh, the, way s the way that Creator's skill boost works is when you hit an enemy, you see those purple lines drop down, that means you have damage amplification on that enemy. Uh, that lasts for five seconds. Just hit them every once every five seconds to get that going for you. The buff also gives you critical chance, 1% per level. Um, yeah. Uh, Crater has four passives. Uh, these three literally just give you more damage. They're very straightforward. Um, different amounts per level for all of those. These increase your gauge amounts for your non-awakening moves, uh, but they do not scale per level, so that's irrelevant. Uh, the first passive, Imagination, increases your independent attack and also increases movement speed and cast speed with broomsticks. Um, as this isn't damage, it's not the most important thing in the world to have a broomstick as your weapon, but it is very nice to have. Um, now I'm going into the active moves now. Um, unless I state otherwise, every move on this list is going to be neutral element, meaning that it would gain bonuses from any inflict you have, such as on your weapon, or through a cube contract. Or an enchantment card if you have one of those on your weapon. Uh, so the first spell is fire. You have firewall and meteor drop. Um, firewall works as you click on the ground, drag it around, and it creates fire. Um, very simple, and Meteor Drop, you right click with fire, and it will drop a Meteor down. Uh, the Meteor will drop in the direction that your character is facing, and it will drop onto the target location. Um, I mentioned before, I don't recommend skilling these, and I'll show you why. I'm going to go ahead and skill these moves and TP them real quick. And I'm going to do, put this on 10 seconds. Ten, five seconds I'm going to use fire, five seconds I'm going to basic attack. That's close enough. And if you look at my damage here, my basic attack is about equal to the amount that fire did in its entirety. It's, it's not a good spell, in my opinion. Oops. 
so that is why I do not recommend Skilling Fire. Um, ice, on the other hand, the second spell, which the two spells are Ice Stone, uh, left click to just have a rolling piece of ice go forward, and right click to drop an ice plate. Um, as you don't have to sit here and like drag this around to hold it, um, you can just mash both left and right click really quick, get all of it out. And you can see that does pretty good damage really quickly. Uh, just in that short amount of time, I did significantly more than I did in the five to six seconds I was basic attacking. Um, and I forgot to mention about fire. Fire is a fire element attack. Never would have guessed, right? Uh, fire, both fire wall and Meteor Drop do not gain bonuses from Inflict. For Ice, this does water damage, and it does not gain bonuses from Inflict. The third spell, Interference, uh, has two spells, Wooden Trap, place it on the ground, creates a little piece of grass for one and a half seconds, uh, and any enemies caught in that will be grabbed. Um, for a varying amount of time depending on how big you make it. If you click on the ground, it'll make it the smallest size possible and hold for five seconds. Five total seconds, which is a lot. And if you drag it out, make it bigger, it will hold for three seconds. Um, most of the time, you're gonna wanna just use the single left click really quickly to get the five second hold out. Um, I can't think of any real situations where you might want to use the big one. Um, now it's important to note that this only hits enemies on the ground. If they're flying, whatever, it will not hit them. The second spell under interference is called Draw. Um, draw is probably the most useful spell on Creator's Kit. Draw can only be used on enemies who are vulnerable to regular holds. They, if they are only vulnerable to super holds, it won't work on them. And the way it works is you right click, you grab them, and you can drag them. That's the entire move. It does no damage, it barely holds them, it doesn't work on most enemies. Uh, the best use for it is really just trolling your teammates. Um, the only example that I can think of where it's actually useful is an Anton raid in the Zombies raid only thing I can think of where it's useful. You can just take a zombie, drag it, put it on a circle. Uh, so neither of these moves do damage. One's just a hold, one's just nothing, pretty much. Uh, the fourth spell is called Protection. It's got two spells. Flame Tornado, which is a channeled move, does fire damage continuously around you, and you can move around during it. And... Ice Shield, just very quickly makes it Ice Shield around you. Um, now the spell, called, the spell is called Protection, and these two spells do exactly that. During Flame Tornado, you are completely invulnerable. Um, no damage other than like boss mechanics will do any damage to you, um, or hit you or anything. Um, Ice Shield uh, is basically a Nengard Light. It doesn't have nearly as much health as an Nengard does, but it has pretty much all of the same mechanics that Nengard does. Um, it will block any damage done to any allies inside the uh, Ice Shield, and it has a slight lingering effect, so it doesn't like break and immediately hit you. Um, now, both Flame Tornado and Ice Shield gain bonuses from Inflict. And I can show that off, if I can stop trolling there. Uh, if I make a... I currently have Water Inflict. I have the Water Element as my highest, and my weapon gives Water. I use Flame Tornado, and I'm actually doing damage to Water Talk, which can only be done with Water Damage. Um, and you would see the same thing with that, if I had Fire Inflict on and you do Water uh, Fire Talk. Uh, the next spell, the last pre-awakening skill, is called Wind, and it's got two spells. Wind Press is a, you hold left click down and you channel a beam of wind, which is pretty cool. And right click, which is Wind Storm. 
Uh, now, Wind Press is mainly only really good as filler, as it is a channeled move. Um, you can't do anything else while you're doing this, but it does a very good amount of damage. Um, Wind Storm. Uh, give me one second. Wind Storm uh, kind of has two different uses. Uh, the first use is, and I kind of already did it a little bit, is a suction. You can hold down right click and it will grab all enemies nearby, pull them into that point. Uh, the other use is if you just rapid fire it, you can get all of it off really quickly. Uh, and you're actually going to want to rapid fire it most of the time unless you're farming and there's a lot of enemies you need to grab together. Stuff like that. Um, now, before I go into the awakening skills, there's one more move I need to use real quick from the awakening skills. Um, creation. Uh, creation is the creator's second awakening spell, and it modifies the behavior of fire, ice, and wind. So, for fire, it makes it so you don't need to drag fire around, it just kind of spits all the fire out all at once. It does make it significantly more useful, uh, fire that is, as a spell, but it's still, it doesn't do any more damage in this version, and I still can't really recommend people skilling it. Ice, uh, you, when you left click now, it shoots out many ice blades, and you can do that twice per gauge. And right click does the same thing, uses the entire gauge, a bunch of ice plays come down. Um, this version of ice actually does increase damage and is pretty useful. Wind also gets incredibly more useful. Uh, wind press is no longer a channel, you simply line it up. Uh, your character facing matters here. You line it up in front of your enemy, left click, and it just makes the laser beam. Then you don't have to channel yourself. And for a full gauge, it does about the same amount of damage, but you don't have to hold it down, which is very useful. Right click makes a large tornado that persists over time with a very strong suction effect. Actually, make some enemies here, I can show that off. Two uses per gauge in this, in this mode. So that's quite useful. So now getting into the awakening skills. Um, so for some reason, they decided they were going to keep spell names and then move names, despite the fact it's only one. I'm mainly going to be referring to these as the individual move names and not so much the spell names. Uh, so your level 50 skill is called Wormhole. Um, it's, it's not a First Awakening, Creator doesn't have a First Awakening, uh, but it does a lot of damage, despite that. It's probably Creator's third strongest move, um, and it is a lot like the Powered Up Windstorm. Place it down, it does damage over time, has a small suction effect, not quite as big as Windstorms, but it's still noticeable. Um, but it has a pretty hefty cooldown. Um, it's about 45 seconds long, I believe. Yeah, 45 seconds to recover from that. So, and most of the damage also comes on the last hit, so you really don't want to miss that. Uh, the next two spells, you got Ice Age and Link. Ice Age is, it works basically identical to wooden fence, except that it's a damaging move instead of a grab. Just place it down, it does damage over time, and you can make it bigger, and making it bigger makes it do less damage, um, but more range can be good for farming, anything like that. Uh, it should be noted, this is a water element move and does not gain bonuses from inflict. So if you're skilling towards fire, this move is probably not going to be nearly as useful for you. Um, 
The next move is called Link. You can click anywhere on the ground to make this little tiny cobbler. It's uh, one of the timelines from Time Gate. Um, you can also click on allies, and it'll, you'll hear a little sound effect when that happens. I don't have any allies here to show that off. Uh, but once you click, you can right click, and it'll make a beam between you, Kabbalah, and any allies you would have done. So you can have out like five beams at a time, or four beams at a time. Um, Link actually tends to be my highest damaging move um, in Beast, which Beast is a basically a giant punching bag. Um, like even even over my 85 move, it does more damage. So this move is not to be underestimated, but you need to be able to, to keep the enemy in that beam the entire time. Um, it should also be noted the main downside to Link. Sometimes you'll face enemies that are, say, in the wall. Uh, think Haboob in the Luke raid, or just any example, something like that. And sometimes enemies also get pushed up against the wall. You cannot place Kabbalah anywhere you cannot walk. I'm spamming left click right now. You can actually see it at the bottom of the screen, and nothing's happening. Um, it has to be somewhere you can reach, and that makes it significantly less useful enemies inside walls. Uh, so the next move, we got time forward. Um, you create a very big Kabbalah. Uh, it does damage over time. The last hit of it is a, an explosion similar to Wormhole. does most of the damage at the end, and it is a grab for the entire duration. Uh, the duration is four and a half seconds. So it's a very long grab, very big grab, and does a lot of damage. Uh, the last skill, creation, into creative space. Creative space has two ways to use it. Uh, the first way is you push it again, jump up on this tree, and then hit space bar to jump off. Huge amount of damage. However, you can do about 10 to 11 percent more damage if you were to shoot off, you see the tree has six fruits. You can shoot them off individually um, by one of two ways. The hard way is to drag the fruits down to your target like this, or you can just right click and it'll automatically blow it up in that spot. Um, and you can see on the skill tooltip, shooting off the individual fruits does this number and blowing them all up at once does that number. So it's, it's 10 to 11% more, I've done the math. Uh, and, and creative space is an absolute monster of a skill. It does so much more damage than anything else in creator's kit. Um, highly recommend skilling towards it whenever possible. Speaking of that, oh, one more, one more thing I forgot to mention. I wrote this down because of that. Uh, when you're using the individual fruit, these fruits do have elements. This is a fire element. This is a water element. And this is neutral. Um, however, they also gain from inflict. If you look very closely, you can see the ice shards coming off on every single hit. Um, so you don't really need to worry about your element for that move. Uh, so next thing I'm going to talk about is gear. Uh, gear, moving into the Harlem level 95 cap, gear is a lot more straightforward than it ever used to be. Um, you get to level 95, um, you go to Sleepy Hollow, get your weapon, move into assault mode, get your legendaries, fill out your entire gear with legendaries, um, and then from there start doing hell modes and donning crevice to upgrade those legendaries into epics. Um, and Really, you don't even need to worry about which set you get. You can re do what's called retexturizing uh, to make everything into plate. Um, creators are a plate armor mastery class. And considering that the Harlem Epics is still not the highest stage you want to get to, kind of don't need to worry about what you get. As long as it isn't uh, Crusader accessories or special equipments. Um, and as I mentioned before, 
you want to get a broomstick if you can. It's not the most important thing. You will lose out on some speeds, but you will not lose out on any damage. Um, as far as enchants go, um, for weapon, accessories, and magic stone, elemental damage. Uh, I would highly recommend either water or all elemental damage. I have all elemental damage. I'm losing out on a grand total of eight possible elemental damage because of that. Um, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's important to note. Um, special equipment, you have the Anton Raid bead. Or I guess the Anton Normal Dungeon bead. Uh, the Nobleski Bijo bead. I forget the precise name of it. Um, but it gives critical chance and independent attack. Uh, creators are a fixed damage class. They do not build magic attack, they build independent attack. Meaning you don't need reinforcement on a weapon, but you do need refinement. Um, which can be its own pain, but it's once you get it to plus eight refinement, you're done. You don't need to worry about it anymore. Um, so for other enchants, uh, for top and bottom, intelligence and independent attack. Uh, independent attack is a new option available in 95 cap for the top and bottom. Um, they are still expensive at this time because of that, but I would highly recommend independent if you can get it, if not intelligence. And intelligence in its own right can be expensive because uh, female crusaders exist, and they like to have intelligence as well. Shoulder, belt, shoe, magical critical chance. You're a magical class, you're gonna need to crit. Very important. For avatars, uh, top and hair, you wanna get intelligence. Top option, I would recommend creative space, is that it's your huge damaging move, you wanna amp that as much as possible. Um, shoes, movement speed, uh, anything else, you can pretty much do what you want, nothing else is really important. Uh, for emblems, intelligence, magical critical chance, and move and cast speed. Very simple and straightforward. Insignia, you have... If you're going for an insignia, they can be a pain in the butt. But if you're going for insignia, independent attack and intelligence. Um, uh, for buff swaps. Um, and I'll talk about this real quick, but it's important to note that once we move into the future, we'll get a new dungeon that I believe is going to be called Operation Hope. And... All 12 equipment slots will be reserved for that. Um, so everything I'm about to say is pretty much going to change. Um, so for now, there's a broomstick called the Bizarre Monster Insect Tail. It gives you 11% additional skill attack on boost. That's very important. Uh, so you want that, and then outside of that, find 10 levels of boost. You can have a Halidom top, if you have just anything else that gives plus skill levels to boost. To get it up to plus 10. It's very straightforward as creator does not have otherverse gear. You can go into otherverse, nothing will drop. Uh, so once once Operation Hope comes out, it will be as I said, the left side will be reserved. All 12 pieces of gear will be reserved for that. Um, and then you want to be able to find as many levels as you can in your title, in your avatars, and in your pets. Um, I only have a plus two boost title. You can get plus three. Um, you can get rare avatars um, for with platinum emblem slots to get uh, two more here. Um, but you want to be able to find seven levels if you can. If you can't, it's not really that big of a deal. The damage loss on that is very minor. Um, but it's important to note what the optimal setting would be. Um, so yeah, other other useful tips. Um, creators are absolute machines when it comes to any mechanic that involves hit count. Uh, I'm actually going to take off my two pieces of gear that give me what's called Eleanor damage. Uh, is that I take off the wrong piece of gear? Oh, I think I had a Havlon proc. Okay, so I have no Eleanor's right now. So my combo count will go up one one per hit. You can see that on the right. I'm going to show you how many hits I can dish out in a very short amount of time.
that is enough to break Dark Luke's barrier right there. By itself. So, if you're ever finding a need for... Like, if you say you're in a party with, uh, like, a Paladin and an Inquisitor, they, they don't do a lot of hits. If you throw a Creator in there, all your problems go away instantly. Um, so, I mentioned that Wooden Fence and Time Forward are very long holds. Uh, if you have a Mind Stimulant Potion, which I can use right now, you can actually chain these two moves back and forth for a maximum of 14 and a half seconds of continuous hold. Just like that. So that could be pretty useful in various situations. Uh, it's important to know what enemies can be held for that long, what enemies can't. Uh, if you were to try to hold, say, Constructor Luke for that long, he might get a little upset. Um, so that could be good. Um, so, as I mentioned before, Creative Space and Windstorm make an incredibly powerful suction. And it lasts for a very long time. Um, this can be, I mean, obviously this can be used for farming enemies, uh, or farming random dungeons with large rooms. So many of the Harlem dungeons have very large rooms. Um, so if you're farming disaster or something, something like that could come in handy. Uh, but going back to Luke Raid, there's a few pretty notable enemies where if you have creative or creation with Windstorm out, you can pretty much ignore a lot of the stuff that they do. Um, I have written down here Fortune Teller Razar, Purging Snader, and Moonlight Walker Yashin. Those three enemies I know like to teleport around a lot. And if you could just walk into the room, throw that down, they'll. Maybe not for Yashin, but for Razar and Snader, they'll try to teleport away and get sucked right back into that spot immediately, which will make it way easier for your party members, um, way easier for you. Um, this makes it so they don't have to run around like crazy and you can get all of your moves off. And it's, it can be very useful to, say, throw these down and then throw this down to make sure that enemies will stay in the Ice Age and the Link. Um, because those those moves don't do a lot of damage if the enemy just walks out of it. Um, so there is a gear setup from 85, level 85 gear. Um, Mana Vortex and Raccoon Vacuum. Um, if you don't have the means to get this, I wouldn't go out of your way to get it, but this setup, if you have access to crafting, like you played a lot during the level 90 cap, um, you may have access to this. Uh, Mana Vortex makes it so every 10 seconds it will refresh a cooldown. And Raccoon Vacuum makes it so that Windstorm costs less gauge and is 30% bigger. Uh, so you can see how big Windstorm can get. And how little gauge it costs. And then every 10 seconds, the gauge will just refresh. There it goes. Uh, this set even into 95 cap can be useful for farming. Um, I've done runs uh, of Total Eclipse back to back to back, and you get about 40 seconds using this setup on that. Uh, if you get into a party uh, for a disaster, for three star disaster mode, um, just having this to suck up all the enemies in the room to one spot, have the rest of your party take them out, can be incredibly useful and speed up your runs substantially. Now, if you can't get this set, again, not that big of a deal. I mentioned the 40 seconds total Eclipse runs that I can do. Uh, I can actually do it substantially faster with my actual gear. Um, it's just a lot more intensive of a run than it is to just walk into every room and do this. Um, but, yeah, creators in general are incredibly good at farming. I can 
use my entire fatigue bar in less than 30 minutes. Which is not something everyone can say. Um, it's not something most of my characters can say. And if I have this up, I have a lot of pretty strong characters. So, Creator is by far my best farmer. Um, she also has the advantage, just on that note, she can pick up items from a distance. If there's an item in the corner of the room, you can just click on it and it'll pick it up. Which is pretty useful. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I have to talk about. Uh, this one I'm especially longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, I hope there's a lot of useful information here. Um, if there's any questions anybody has about Creator, feel free to ask me. I'll make sure to have contact information in the video description. Um, you can also contact me on Discord. I'll have that information down there as well. Uh, I've been playing Creator since she came out. I've been playing this version of the game since it came out. I've been playing DFO since the launch of the old version. Um, when the level cap was like level 40. Uh, I've been around DFO for a very long time. Um, so, hopefully, a lot of useful information here, and hope to see more creators. Um, but I hope people will know what creators are capable of, because it seems that seems to be a problem in our version of the game. Um, so, yep, everyone, have a good day.